Too often, the world of film shows us the world that, well, Hollywood producers, mainly straight, white Hollywood producers want to show us, but more importantly, some films show us the world as it is. A case in point is the work of our next guest, filmmaker Cheryl Dunier. We're going to be speaking about her new film, Black is Blue. Cheryl, welcome. Hi. And so sorry for messing up your name. <laughs> That's all right. No worries. You know, you know Cheryl these Dunier. Names, these names are special. Yeah. Now, you've had a long career yes, yes, in I filmmaking. Have. Tell us a little bit about your resume, including what I understand is the first ever African-American lesbian film. Well, right. Well, lesbian feature. My um, which is Which is really interesting because, you know, I, I'm also an academic and I teach mm -hmm. film. And there have been a lot of people who've, you know, made work we can even qualify stuff from you know back in the 20s and 30s mm -hmm. but when we started seeing them in sort of the indie form um, and putting together the concept of being african-american and and storytelling um, i did that in 1996 with the watermelon woman and my cohort mm -hmm. um, and uh, i played it here in san francisco at the castro and um, i wouldn't say everything's been a bit of roses like the film talks about but it's, it's quite funny to be living the life of that filmmaker who i created in that film, somebody who's working and, and constantly sort of, you know, moving through the world of, of independent film and commercial film as well as now with a new short film. Right. Like it's worth. How much has your world filmmaking changed, specifically in the LGBT mm -hmm. community, mm -hmm. from 1996 to 2014? Right, right. Both yeah. in the work you do but also how it's perceived? Mm. Interesting. Well, I would say that when... Um, I started with the watermelon woman. There were there were less images. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that there are a lot more images, and I wouldn't say that um, y y y there, there's just not enough uh, of, of different colors and, and different intersections of race, class, and genders. So there's very few pieces that are out there trying to put that in a feature format. So you still see a lot of shorts, which I think are very important and and for for those communities of intersection, mm -hmm. but I. I definitely feel like with the feature, which is a harder project to you know pull together sometimes for people, and I've been doing it for a while. You you you, you don't see those jewels. You see them every about five years. Right. Or so. Well, now. The film that we're going to talk about a little bit today, which is going to debut at the upcoming Frameline Festival in yes. San Francisco, yes. Black is Blue. Mm -hmm. There are all those issues going on in it. Right. I mean, <laughs> gender, gender identification, race, mm -hmm. economic disparity. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the hero mm -hmm. of Black is Blue. Yes, yes. Kingston Faraday plays Black who was formerly blue before he transitioned, he was a woman, um, and he dated other women, so he was a butch, or mm -hmm, mm -hmm. blue as a butch. And um, I wanted to explore this character, so it's really sort of a, a portrait or a character study. I mean, it's there's lots of strokes, and again, you have all those intersections between their, their former identity and their present identity, all happening one night um, at work. Um, when And uh, Black is a security guard. Uh, black is a security guard. So at his night shift, at the party that he's a security guard at, in comes an, an ex from his sort of last ex. Mm -hmm. And it triggers, you know, a lot of memories and feelings. So um, the film um, depicts this and explores this in a, you know, beautiful way with mm -hmm. a beautiful team of people, beautiful acting, um, and sort of my trademark Dunier mentory, which I always do <laughs> in my films, um, which has a talking head component that playfully and seriously talks about these issues from the actor's point of view as well as them speaking in character. Right. Um, so all that's mixed together and it was shot here in Oakland um, mm -hmm. and it, it just you know it was just a wonderful project to work on and, and such important themes to to bring to life and, right, right. on the screen. Who is black and who is blue in your real life mm. as far as inspiration? Mm. It's so interesting. I guess uh, last year, last you know, June 13, um, I started exploring and putting together a couple of characters that I was working on. I was looking at the concept of sort of trans identity, you know, people who present masculine, um, and then I was looking at the in 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 race in different ways, and so I started to explore that. And so this is a kind of culmination of that exploration, which um, I found out that you know, a lot of people and sort of um, think it's easy and, and have an easier time, I think, when you think about transitioning and privilege that you, you know, get from that. So if you mm -hmm. transition into, you know, a white male, 
you're sort of having access to white male privilege, whatever that might mean mm -hmm. in your world. I'm not saying that, you know, when you transition to a white man, you're like, you know, hey, you're, you know, running Google or something like that. But, you know, definitely I feel that when you transition to um, African American or of color and you're um, male presenting, you're opening the door to, uh, you know, another bag of tricks right. here. And so the film really explores that. And, you know, a lot of people don't have documentation in this realm, whatever. So the issues that we're, we're seeing in, in sort of trans cinema, you know, a lot of it's about coming out. And I wanted to move the conversation forward right. to really talk about sort of the life and, 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 and really work with people from that community. Yeah, and let me go back to, you know, actually what I was trying to get at with that earlier question about how has your work changed mm. from 96 to 2014. Okay. I All mean, right. in 1996, there weren't many films about the transgender community. Right. I mean, as a, a white gay man, mm -hmm. I'm willing to own the whole concept of, mm -hmm. of white privilege. Right. I didn't know a lot about the transgender community. Right, right. I got educated by my trans friends. Mm -hmm. And as I went along, being from Richmond, Virginia, I mean, I noticed right away, it's like, boy, there's not a lot of black folk in the Castro. Right. As a filmmaker, is the LGBT community in general more transphobic or more racist? Because you deal with both those issues oh, in this wow. film. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> excuse me, um, that's a very interesting question. And I would say it's as is this transphobic and racist as sort of the <laughs> as America and, uh -huh. and the world is you know I would, so we're not special we don't have we're any... not special I think uh -huh. you know the world out there you know has it in for anybody who is other you know and mm -hmm. looks other you know I mean there's a way that you can blend in mm -hmm. um, and look like you know the sort of status of, of folks that are out there but right. you know, anybody who does not look you know, like their their community or their, their environment is definitely up for whatever, and that's historically. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's been you know since the beginning of of time and and, and cities and you know mm -hmm. urban communities. So you know, definitely folks who are, are you know sort of stand out are, are, are always going to stand out yeah. by, in any community. How proud are you to have made this film in Oakland? This is an Oakland film. Yes, you know, this, this is, is an Oak Oakland Town. Film. This is you know, and, and how does. Oakland impact the gay community in San Francisco? I mean, you know, it seemed like SF owned the whole gay brand for right. a few decades there. Right. No, it's interesting. I recently moved to the Bay Area to work at California College of the Arts, which is in San Francisco. Um, couldn't, you know, find a place to stay. So, of course, I landed in Oakland. And um, wonderful community. And it's interesting. I, I was living abroad in the Netherlands in 2000, up to 2007. And I was thinking, hey, maybe I should move to the Bay Area. And I want to be where I feel like I fit in, mm -hmm. you know, where people look like me, act like me, present like me. And, and Oakland had it going on at that point, but I actually ended up uh, staying in Los Angeles for other reason and commuting mm -hmm. crazily, which you can do here. I can't, can't wait for that train. Um, <laughs> You're going to be waiting a while. Right, I'm going to be waiting a while. But, um, you know, so I decided to move up here and I moved to where I feel like I'm, I belong. Right. And so people look like me or empowered like me. They're, you know, it's such a vibrant scene. And, you know, vibrant scenes also have violence, you know, and, and, you know, a lot of transitioning right now going on, in, in particular in Oakland. So my film does explore s the sort of policing that's happening yeah. with all this new gentrification and everybody moving here because it either looks like them or they, they're, they're being, you know, forced out of, right, right. of San Francisco. Well, thank you for being on the show with us. We look forward okay. to seeing oh, right. Black is Blue. Yes, thank we've, you so much. We've been speaking with Cheryl Dunier about her film Black is Blue. I'm David Perry. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week on 10%.